put my life in your hands. Direct me, give me the words to say. Oh my fears, you understand. I don't know what you've got planned. To you, portions of the book Esther from the Old Testament is the story of faith, courage, corruption, and justice. The setting is the citadel of Susa, the capital of the Persian Empire. We begin with a poor J Jewish man named Mordecai and his cousin Esther. Esther's parents died when she was very young, and Mordecai had raised her as his own child. He knew she was special and that God had brought them together for a reason. Mordecai prayed for guidance every day. In time, Esther grew into a beautiful young woman. On the opposite side of the citadel stood the king's castle. Susa was ruled by a temperamental man named Azuerus. He had recently become displeased with his wife Vashti and banished her from Susa. Now he was alone and miserable. Once in the citadel of Susa, Azuerus was the king, was the king. One day, as the king sat on his throne, he had a great idea. Heralds, heralds, get in here at once. Yes, O mighty king. Yes, your majesty. Anything you say, your highness. At your service, my lady. Silence, we're having a singing contest. I've decided to have a new wife. Go out into the citadel, find all the eligible young women, and bring them back and tell them we're having a singing contest. The winner will be my new queen. Go, go on. Seeks a wife, King Ahasuerus seeks a wife. All the girls in town come and gather round. King Ahasuerus seeks a wife. Girls from Susa join our big palooza. All the girls from Susa join our big palooza. King Ahasuerus seeks a wife. King Ahasuerus seeks a wife. was on her way to fetch some water from the well when her cousin Mordecai came running to meet her. Esther, have you heard the news? No, I haven't heard anything. What is it? Cousin Mordecai, are you okay? I'm fine. It's you I'm here to talk about. What? Me? What do you mean? Esther, King Ahasuerus is looking for a new wife. He and his heralds are gathering all the eligible girls in town. There is going to be a singing contest and the winner will become the new queen. 
That's silly. No one chooses a wife that way. You can't be serious, Cousin Mordecai. Yes, dear, I am. You could be the queen. What? Me? Queen? Come on, I'm not queen material. I mean, just look at me. I'm only a poor Jewish girl. This could be very important for your future. Sure, you feel strongly about this, but what about me? You have always been a queen in my eyes. Oh, Cousin Mordecai, you're just saying that to be kind. Um, well, I'm just common. Not to me. I've always known you would do great things one day. I know you mean well, but I can never be a queen. It just isn't possible. Anything is possible with God, Esther. Somehow I always knew that God had more in store for you. Your journey's end may be unseen, but trust in God I stood. Never stronger in my whole life. Why don't you just give it a try, Esther? Okay, I'll try. I know better than to argue with you. That's my girl. There's just one more thing to remember. What's that? This is just for your safety, Esther. Don't tell the king that you're a Jew. Why not? Our people are at peace, Esther, but just in case anything should happen to change that, I don't want you to get caught in the middle. I understand. I'll do as you ask, Cousin Mordecai. I do love you. So Esther went with the heralds to the palace for the king's singing contest. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the king's singing contest. I'm Haggai, your host for the evening. Let's meet our judges. You probably all know of King Ahasuerus, and with him is Shah's gods from the House of Cow from that BC reality hit Persian Idol. Let's get started right now. Contestant one, please come forward. Okay, I can do this. At least we know she's not lip syncing. <laughs> I kind of wish she was. Come on, let's go. Wow, Shaw's got a major disappointment. Disappointment? There are no vocabulary words to describe how terrible that was. <laughs> At least it was mercifully short. <laughs> well, let's move on to contestant number two.
voice teacher. Get her Laura and see whoever that is. <laughs> and your camel has two left feet. be a long night. Contestant three, please come forward. stood up. The contest was over, and Esther was the clear winner. King Ajuerus and Esther were married immediately. with other Jews in Susa when he overheard something. It was a conversation between Big Ben and Teresh, the guardians of the castle gate. Ajuerus is so full of himself, he is driving me crazy. Yeah. Who does he think he is? Um, the king? Yeah, who died and made him king? He is the king. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about again? That we don't like the king? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
And why don't we like him? Because he is so full of himself and he is driving me crazy. Yeah. Who died and made him king? He is the king. Yeah. Who does he think? <laughs> we need to get rid of him. Mordecai heard the gatekeeper's plan to get rid of the king. He knew that he must do something, so he sent word to Esther. Who relayed the message to the king? Who arrested the two gatekeepers? And Mordecai was recorded as a hero in the official world record book. Not long, not long after the wedding, the king realized he needed some help with his kingly tasks. He promoted a man named Haman to be his second in command. What he didn't know that was that Haman was a very sinister man who only thought of himself. The promotion only inflated his already inflated ego. all about me what can I say it's all about me I am in command I'm the king's right hand cuz I'm promoted now everyone must Are. I am the king's right hand. I bow to no person, only to God. Who are you? Mordecai, a Jew. Mordecai, the Jew. I'll never forget that name. You'll be sorry. You've upset me. The king will not like this, not one bit. You can say what you like, Haman, but I will never bow to you. We'll I'm pap I think again if I were you, I will the power of the king. And I answer to a greater. We'll see about that, won't we? By the time I'm done with you, you and your Jewish people, you'll know what real power is. I already do. Haman was infuriated. He was already forming a plan to manipulate the king and get his revenge on Mordecai. He wanted to talk to the king immediately, but he knew the rule. Anyone who addressed the king without an invitation would be put to death. So Haman waited through not patiently. In a few days, the king finally called upon him, and Haman took his opportunity to act. So what's on your mind, Haman? Indeed, there is, Your Majesty. You know I've always been loyal to you, right? Yes, of course, Haman. Well, not everyone in the Citadel of Susa is as loyal as I am. There's a certain group of people in Susa who do not keep your laws. Well... These people should not go unpunished, should they? Well, if they're breaking the laws, uh, they... 
Of course not. These people should not be tolerated, should they? Mm, no. Absolutely right, your your high, your Majesty. I can help with this problem. Wouldn't you like me to help you? Isn't that why you promoted me in the first place? Yes, of course, Haven. Well, of course, it would be easier if you let me have your signet ring. If I give you my signet ring, that would give you a lot of power. But I only have your best interests at heart. You taught me well. Well, if you think that's what we need, you now have power of my signet ring. Write your decree, seal it with my signet ring, and make it official. So Hammond wrote a decree declaring that in one month's time, all the Jewish people in the citadel of Susa would be put to death. Then he made it official by sealing it with the king's ring. Haman's plan had succeeded. No one would dare defy him again. Haman never told the king the decree commended the Jewish people. The king was also unaware that Esther and her family were Jewish. Outside the castle walls, the news spread quickly. When Mordecai heard, he was heartbroken. As was the Jewish custom during times of mourning and distress, he put on sackcloth and ashes and wandered through the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. All the Jewish people mourned with him. dark day arrives. What did we do to the king to pay with our lives? God, we fast and pray that all survives. Put on your sackcloth and ashes a dark day arrives. about Haman's plan. He sent word to her and they met secretly at the castle gate. When Esther heard about the decree, she was horrified. Oh, cousin Mordecai, what can we do? There's nothing more I can do. It is you who can make a difference this time. What can I do? I don't have the power to undo the king's seal. No, but you can talk to the king. He loves you. Even so, I'll be put to death by just barge in uninvited to speak with him. If you don't, then we'll all be put to death. Esther, this is God's plan for you. This is why you are queen. Oh, cousin Mordecai, this is a terrible choice. I'm frightened. Just remember, Esther, you are not alone. It seems this is my calling. My people need me. I must go talk to the king. God, give me strength. Put my life in your hands, direct me, give me the words to say. Inside the decree, my people need me. Give me the strength, Lord, I pray. Call my fears, you understand. I don't know what you've got planned, but he
next day, Esther awoke with a plan. She walked past the throne room in the hope of catching the king's eye. As soon as he saw her, he gestured for her to join him. Esther, even if it is half my kingdom, you will get as you wish. If it pleases the king, then let the king and Haman come today to a banquet that I have prepared for them. Guards, go fetch Haman so we shall do as Esther desires. Esther then summoned the royal caterers and they set up a feast like no other. The king and Haman came just like she hoped they would. What is your request, Esther? Even if it is half my kingdom, you'll get as you wish. If I have won the king's favor, and if it pleases the king, then let the king and Haman come again tomorrow to another banquet that I have prepared for them. And then I will do as the king has said. The king and Haman accepted her invitation at once. Haman was in a good mood. The exclusive invitation caused his ego to grow even more. As he was returning home from the banquet, Haman noticed Mordecai watching through the castle gate. His mood disappeared. That night, he ordered a stockade to be built in the middle of the town so that Mordecai could be humiliated. That night, the king could not sleep. He made his way to the throne room and called the the keeper of the royal records. Read to me from the royal record. Yes, of course. Yes, of yes, of course, Your Majesty. In the month of Adoria, in the eleventh year of King Ahasuerus, the king took his honeymoon to Club Med, Go on. In the month of Adoria, in the eleventh year of King Ahasuerus, Mordecai the Jew saved the king from assassination by the gatekeepers, Big Thin and Tuesh. Wait a minute, I remember that Mordecai guy. He saved my life. Did we ever do anything to thank him? Uh, no. Are you certain? If it's not in the record, it did not happen. Well, who is around to think of something to honor him? I wouldn't know, sire. I don't make history, I just write it. <laughs> Haman was on his way to share his plan to humiliate Mordecai. When the king saw him, when the king saw him, he summoned the rule. He summoned Haman immediately. This made both of them. Very happy. Something on your mind, Taman? Yes, Your Majesty. What should be done to honor men that the king wants to honor? Haman, of course, selfishly assumed the king wanted to honor him. His mind was full of ideas. Give him a royal robe, give him a golden crown, show up a ray, tell the main drag in the town, and when the cheering crowd, let all the people sing, all the northern men, in the name of the king.
Amen. That sounds great. Well, thank you. I aim to please. So, uh, what are we gonna... Right now. Oh, wow, I have really pet a cat. Yes, for it. Mordecai the Jew that sits at the castle gate. Do everything that you have said. Leave out nothing. What? Huh? Quickly get, get the robes and the horse. Leave out nothing that you have mentioned. So as the sun rose, Haman, Haman took the robes and the horse and led Mordecai through the open square of the city. It was the worst day of Haman's life. Despite the serious nature of the situation in Susa, Mordecai did find some enjoyment in being led around by Haman. This night, however, he knew that the fate of the Jewish people lay in Esther's plan. He prayed for God to give his cousin strength. Esther was about to risk it all for, in an effort to save her people. After his ordeal with Mordecai, he was counting the seconds until he could get his enemy into the stockade. The king still suspected that Esther had another motive for the banquet. He asked her again. So what is your request, Esther? Even if it is half my kingdom, you will get as you wish. If I have won the king's favor and if it pleases the king, spare the Jewish people. Spare me and my family. For we have been betrayed and will soon be destroyed. Who would do such a thing? It is someone right here in this castle. Someone right here at this table. He is the enemy of my people. The wicked Haman. Oh, well, this has been fun, but I really gotta go. Stop right there. Guards, arrest him. You can't arrest me. I'm the king's second in command. Consider yourself fired. But I have the signet ring. Take that too. Once the king learned of the stockade Haman had built from Mordecai, he ordered his guards to put Haman in the stockade instead. Mordecai was summoned to the castle immediately. You have proven yourself with faith and principle. You stood up for what you believe. Uh, you saved my life. You raised Esther to be my beloved queen. I hereby give you the house of Haman. and promote you my second-in-command. 